What's up guys? So in this video, we're going to take a look at perhaps one of the biggest features in iOS 18, which is the redesign control center. Now there's so much to unpack in iOS 18, so I'll be breaking up all the new features into a series of videos. So let's go ahead and dive right into the redesign control center. So on the left of this video, I will show what the old control center looks like in iOS 17. So as you can see, there's quite a big difference here. It's a lot more colorful, especially with the brightness and volume sliders. And we have some changes just to the overall design. Let's go ahead and look up at the top. We have a power button up here now, so that's another way to power off your phone. To get this to work, you have to press and hold the power button. They put that in just to prevent any accidental presses of it. You also have a plus button, and that allows you to move things around and add new things. It's also one of the big changes is that you can move anything around. So before you had your connectivity and your audio playing at the top, now you can move it around wherever you want. Same thing with the bottom, if you want to put some of that stuff up here you can you see now we have rounded icons if you go to edit just tap and hold you can resize some of these icons so you could take the timer you could have it one by one one tall two long two by two lots of customization you could do pretty much any icon another one of the big changes is the connectivity area so now if you go into it uh, you have much more options now you have vpn so you can turn that on and off right here it's a nice list and you have sort of arrows next to airdrop wi-fi and bluetooth that lets you know that you can go in sort of change options here like your wi-fi network or your bluetooth devices that you're connected to and one of the biggest changes at the control center is now you have multiple pages so on default you have your first page that's your favorites page then it goes down to the music page then you have your home devices and then you have a page dedicated to your connectivity you can also add more pages you can add pages down below uh, in between these so you can use more controls on the control center now i also have a lot of new controls so we'll go on to a new page i will show you some of those so here you have like recommended controls let's start by the list so camera that's your first one and obviously if you press it it opens the camera and then also, if you tap and hold on the camera, you can go to different types of photos. So you have selfie, video, portrait, or portrait selfie. Next, you have clock. You have alarm, timer, and stopwatch. Let's put on alarm. And you can expand it just like any other. Pretty simple. Press that. It goes into clock app and then to the alarms. And then you tap and hold on the alarm. You can create alarm, start stopwatch, or start timer. So you can kind of do pretty much everything with that. Let's go ahead and add the second clock widget, the timer. And if you press it, it goes on the clock and then to the timer. If you start a timer and you go back to the control center, it'll highlight and it'll have like a circular timer. They added motion to the icon so you can tell that pretty easily. And you tap and hold on it, it shows your timer. Unfortunately, you can't see how long is left on the timer without going into like tapping and hold it or pressing on it to go to the timer app. Hopefully they'll add this, so just have like timer left below it. I think that would be beneficial. Same thing for the alarm. If you have alarms enabled, which I, I do, you see the alarm icon next to the do not disturb. Uh, I really wish you could just see it below here. You know, give you more information at a glance, especially if you have it in one of these bigger sizes. And then for the last clock widget, you have the stopwatch, so pretty simple. If you tap and hold it, same thing as the alarm. You could create alarm, stop, start stopwatch, or start timer. If you tap it, it goes to stopwatch and the clock up. Then you have your connectivity. So you, ha you have the two by two connectivity panel that's on the favorites page, excuse me, by default. And if you use the grabber to resize it, if you put it at the top of the page, you can have the full size page just like what is on here. It, it knows that now it has the that's the connectivity page, so it puts the connectivity logo on that page right here. You also have a few different buttons. You can add airplane mode, pretty self-explanatory. And then if you expand it, it, it'll show on or off. Once so you tap it, it goes into airplane mode. Then you have your cellular data. This shows a nice little white background and it's now green when it's on, when it's not, it's just a regular uh, gray background. The icon's gray as well. If it's in one of the bigger sizes, it shows on or off under it. So you'll be able to tell that and finally, you've got personal hotspot, and the same thing, you make it a bigger icon, it'll show you off or on. And now you have display and brightness. We can add brightness and text size. You can change your brightness up and down just for the slider. Now, this is the one that can't be resized at all. I was sort of hoping you could flip it sideways, but you can't, so that's just how 
that is. But just like before, if you tap and hold it, you have dark mode, night shift, and true tone settings right in here as well. Now, let's add the text size. This existed before, but now it's sort of its own slider, just like the brightness slider. You have the one by one, that's just your lowercase, uppercase A's, and then you can put it into a one by two tall widget, or actually that's all you can do. You can use that to increase or decrease your text size. When you do that, it should show at the top there it is text size 100%. So it, it'll show you the new text size after you you adjust it. And then around the middle is the default 100%. Tap and hold it. Just like before, you could change it for all apps or just the current app you're in. If you go to that, it gives you more options as well. And then you also have orientation lock. You've had this before, I've always had it. Then if you expand it, now it says unlocked or locked under it. So a little easier to understand. If you are a person who understands things by symbols, screen recording, you've got the same thing. Then you got screen mirroring, we've had this for a while. But then if you expand it, it'll show off under it, or if it's on, it'll say like on. And the last one in the display and brightness section is dark mode, and we've had this for a while. Expand it, and now it just says on. Toggle it off easily that way. So after display and brightness, then we got focus. So that's your focus settings. Only in the 2 by one long position. This is the one you can't resize at all. One change here is if you go into it, but as you see, it says silence all notifications before there's just nothing under it. And then we've got the home section. So first we have home and that's just your devices. And then this is one that you can actually edit. Go into the editing mode and you tap and hold it or just tap it, just like widgets on the home screen. You have a menu here. First, you have a slider to use recommended scenes and accessories. Under it, you can tell it what to show. So scenes and accessories, scenes only, or just accessories only. And then if you turn off use recommended, you can use custom scenes and accessories. Well, then you could resize it. You have a four by two tile. This one's unique. It has a bigger tile size as well. You can also have a four by one. So just keep going on the homepage, you have much bigger tiles as well. You could have this uh, giant four by six or just the four by four. Then you have a widget called scene or accessory. So it says choose scene. This is another one you can edit. It says choose scene or accessory. So you just tap that and you can choose it. It's just one scene or accessory. And you can have that one scene or accessory be a two by two tile. You also have it a one by one tile or a two by one. And you have a home widget. So that just takes you to your smart home app. So you press it. Now it takes you to my home. Also, if you tapping and hold the home, you'll have a new scene option. Next, you have notes. So you have a new note or a new quick note. So this is pretty self-explanatory. So press and it takes you to a new note. Let's go ahead and try the quick note widget. We have quick notes here. It's just like a note with a scribble on it. It creates a new quick note. Then you have now playing. This one is a default on the favorites page. This one is a little different. So now you can change it. If you want, you can have a four by one, a four by two, or a two by two, which is the default. This one can be made into a four by four or a giant full screen size. Then you have the Apple TV remote. So let's go ahead and test that. And it takes you to the remotes and you can control your TV. And you go down to shortcuts. You can tap shortcut here and then you know, just a little shortcut glyph. This is another one you can edit and then you can just choose basically any shortcut. And then if you have it in a bigger size, it'll show what your assigned shortcut is. So this I definitely recommend having it in at least two by one, maybe two by two, just so you can see what uh, that shortcut is. And we also have an open app shortcut, basically a shortcut to open any app you want. Let's make it two by one. And then when you're in edit, you tap it and you could choose an app. Let's go ahead and make it the new passwords app that's new in here in iOS 18. Now it's passwords and it says open passwords and then it makes that app icon the glyph. Let's go ahead and test that out. It opens a new passwords app. And then you have sounds. So here's like your volume slider. This is another one that's default on the favorites page. Can't resize it. The glyph here is now blue instead of just gray before. So it gives it a little more color. If you tap and hold it, so you got a bigger slider. And then if you have noise canceling AirPods in, you can adjust those settings through here, just like you could before. And then you got your uh, Shazam recognize music. 
I don't have anything playing, so it's not gonna recognize that. And then you've got Translate app, and the only one here is Translate, so, and you can make it bigger, and it shows the language it's translating to under the Translate uh, text here. So let's go ahead and try that. Then you see it's, it takes me right to that. And you have utility, so there's quite a lot you can do here. You have flashlight. This one is also a default on the favorites page. You can resize it and it'll show off. When you turn it on, it'll show on. However, it doesn't show the percent it's on. And then you also have low power mode. It'll show on under it when it's on, and then you turn it off, which just is off. Now the glyph is just gray and white. And when it's on, the glyph will be yellow and white like it always was. Then you have the calculator, and if you hold it, so you can copy the last result. Maybe if you're in the 4x4, I feel like it should let you see the last results on here, since there's so much empty space, but I still got something to add on. You also have the feedback assistant. Now, th this is something, if you're a beta tester, which I am, and you tap it, it goes to the feedback app. Then you have the print sensor. So I guess this just shows you what documents are waiting to be printed on your phone. Then you have announced notifications. So this is for when you have AirPods connected and you wanna announce notifications. So you see my AirPods are connected. See now it's on, it's highlighted, and now the glyph is red. You can also mute for one hour. It doesn't relay that though, it just says off. So hopefully they change that. Although if you do tap and hold it, it will say it's off until whenever it will be off until. And then you also do off for the rest of the day. You also have scan code. Let's go ahead and try this out. And then it just opens the camera app. And you also have the magnifier, so... And then these apps are sort of similar to Widget in here. So they're not too different, but each has a different use purpose. Gonna magnify things for you. And here we go. Now we're on to voice memo. When you tap it, it starts a voice memo. You see now it's up here, it's recording. And then while that's on, if it's in the 2x1 or 2x2 position, it'll show recording. And then it also shows the white background, and you'll know it's recording. And then you have wallets, so you have your wallets widget right here. And if you tap it, it will take you right to your wallets app. And tap to cash. This is brand new in iOS 18. It allows you to use Apple Pay or Apple Cash to transfer cash you to another person. If we go ahead and tap on this... You can add an amount and send it from there. You're down to the watch app. You have ping my watch. Let's go ahead and try this. It says pinging. And then now go down to the accessibility and there's a lot here. So you have accessibility shortcuts and you have new widgets for each of the, uh, the main accessibility features. Assistive access, guided access, live speech. You have so many different uh, sections here too. Motor accessibility, vision accessibility, um, hearing accessibility. So lots of things you can do here. Probably won't have time for them all, but let's go ahead and look at the background sounds. So you could expand this and that says off under it. And then you go into it, it turns on. And then if you tap and hold it, you have the sounds you could choose from. This is stuff we've always had. And then you have uh, more settings for it down here. So you can turn it on and it should start playing for you. Then you have hearing devices. That also gives you background sounds. It gives you live listen and sound levels if you have headphones connected. So we've got access. This is a feature that's been here uh, for quite a while now, but we have a new widget closely for it. So if we tap it, then we'll better spot. So we go to the guide of access. This is useful if you want to give your phone to someone, but not give them so many features that they can access everything on your phone. So it allows you, you can circle parts of a screen you want to disable. So you could disable that if you want. Those have options. You can set a time load if you want. Enable or disable touch. Enable or disable software keyboards. Same thing for motion, volume buttons, and the sleep wake button. We also have assistive access. So if we go into this, we this is another one we've had for a while. And then it takes you to assistive access in settings. You need to learn more about it and what's new in assistive access. Useful if you're an accessibility user. You also have your live listen right here. So in this moment, it says off under it, press it. You'll need headphones to be able to turn it on. And then last one before we move on, headphone accommodations. Headphone accommodation, then if, if you have headphones on and paired, it should give you some options in there. Then down to motor accessibility, you have switch control, voice control, full uh, keyboard. Let's see what this says. 
full keyboard access so you have assistive touch another one that's been here for a while apple watch mirroring and controlling nearby devices let's go look at assistive touch assistive touch allows you to perform device actions and gestures by navigating through an on-screen menu and selecting the action you want to perform you can more easily access things like gestures using just one finger right or here. screenshots device menus and just volume or the ring switch this is useful if you can't reach certain buttons on your device Let's take a look at accessibility shortcuts. So this is a widget that's been here basically forever. Um, if you have to tap and hold it. And you, so these are your accessibility options here, um, depending on what you have enabled in settings. And then last but not least, you have vision accessibility. So you have your classic invert. You can do color filters, live recognition, increase contrast, vehicle motion cues, reduce motion, reduce transparency, reduce white points, smart invert, voiceover, zoom, speak screen, dim flashing lights, hover text, and hover typing. This is what classic inverts looks like. Color filters gives a blue tint to the screen. Each contrast adds contrast to colors. You increase, can see a difference here in the orange and yellow. Vehicle motion cues is a new accessibility feature to reduce motion sickness. You can change it to always on, on only in vehicle, or off. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys my current control center layout. So after a little bit of customizing, this is what I came up with. Here's my favorites page. So first to the top left, we have my now playing. I just kept it a two by two. I considered making it a four by one shape but just have to see what i prefer for now i'm going to keep it at that and then we have our connectivity right next to that again two by two below my now playing i have my focus modes it just takes up two tiles two long one tall and then to the right of that i have my low power mode and then to the right of that my flashlight those are both just one by one icons and i put them up here so I'll, I'll usually see them first in that spot and i use those quite often and then below my focus modes i have my brightness slider and my volume slider next to that and then next to that i have my alarm now i did have the stopwatch widget right here but i figured that if you just tap and hold on the alarm you can start a stopwatch right here so then i have my uh camera widget right here and then below that i have a scan qr code then to the left of that we have new note and then to the left of that my calculator and then my screen recording icon which i use quite a bit so that line is kind of like my productivity panels of controls and then i have my home controls now i only have two here i don't have many smart home accessories and then to the right of that i have orientation lock in case i ever need that and then hearing settings that allows you like background sounds and headphone audio levels and then i have text size which i use sometimes when i need to read things and i can't so we go down this is my music plan so instead of it being full screen i condensed it into half the screen and then we skip a line and then we have my audio apps we have Shazam, which allows you to recognize music with your mic. And then we have Apple Music. And then to that, we have two shortcuts. This one leads me to Apple Podcasts. And then this one leads me to YouTube. I just figured I'd have my audio apps here right next to the audio panel. Now, by default, the home accessories is after this. But I went ahead and put connectivity right here. The reason I put it down here is because I only have like two smart home accessories in my home right now. I won't be using it very much. Down here, I also have the home app widget that takes you right to the app. Now, I want to put this in the middle, but it's being kind of glitchy. I guess we'll keep it at that for now. I do have my TV remote here, and I have my screen mirroring. I have these two, the remote and the screen mirroring, because one of the two devices in my smart home is a smart TV. So it just makes sense that I put them right here since there's not much else to fill a space with. But yeah, that's my control center setup for right now. I really like it. It's it's much better than before. It's look much more practical. Uh, I might change a little bit. Maybe things I use more often, like screen recording widget right here. I might make it bigger and put it up here where the alarm is but we we'll have to see what i like it's all customizable whenever you install this on your device you can customize it however you like so thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you did enjoy please be sure to like and subscribe we're gonna have a lot more apple coverage coming soon in the bottom right is gonna be a playlist about all my ios 18 coverage and in the top right is my most recent video i'll see you guys later